everybody, welcome back. Uh, Tommy and I want to talk to you about the Paul O'Keefe interviews. I didn't watch them, but Tommy, you did. Oh, yes, I did. And I... I only saw snippets. I've said this before. I really feel like he's gullible and believing everything else because he's not from... he. Well... Yeah, he's not from... He's Canada. not living in Canton. Mm -mm. He's elsewhere. Uh, I want to say down in Florida is where mm -hmm. I think he's at. Mm -hmm. But I, I might be mistaken, so please don't blast me. I've not tried to look up to see where he's at. I've just been, you know what I'm saying, just kind of yeah. seeing everything and how it's going. But I worry about him. I worry about the family. Uh, I know the kids. I would ask that people have some empathy for Paul O'Keefe. I know he still thinks Karen Reed is guilty. Um, I think that he got all of his information from Canton PD. And so in his mind, probably that confirmation bias is already there. But it's important to know this man is grieving. He lost his sister and now he lost his brother. Yeah. And he, it, it seems like he's the strong one to hold everybody together. You know, the glue right now, the strong one in the family now, because he also now has to watch for his pa his parents are elder, elderly. They're raising the children. He's got his own family. He's had to sit through this kangaroo court. And at the same time, he's hearing all of this. He's reliving this because he's seeing all these photos of the injuries to his brother. And his brother in his final state. So that's a lot for anyone to absorb. Anyone. And, you know, and if, if that doesn't affect you in some way, you got issues. We're, we might need to have a true crime channel uh, episode on you. So we're going to go ahead and watch this. I think we need to let Paul have his say. But also look at it. Keep looking at it from this outside looking in. And when you do that, it does look like he's so gullible for the BS. I it, Like I said, I love the word gullible. You know, I, I it's just one of those things where it's like the he said, she said, you know, you start believing it and you start seeing it. But then once the facts actually hit you in the face, which he was there the entire time, mm -hmm. I don't understand. So we'll listen to him and hear what he, Paul has to say. Okay, here we go. Is that better? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah, but this interview gets interesting, Mel. And okay. I just, I'm not going to tell you any hidden secrets or anything like that. I want you to watch it. Besides uh -huh. the guy that you can see in the glass mirror. Or the, in the window pane, you see. Oh, you him mean a lot. the cameraman? Yeah. yeah. Let's not look at him. He starts okay? walking back and forth, and you'll just be like, "Why?" Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. All right. So, here we go. I my first question is obvious: just how are you doing? How's your family doing? I mean, we're doing all right, hanging in there. It's he looks so much like his brother. Long, painful two and a half years, and I mean, with the mistrial that happened the other day, obviously it's wasn't ideal but if we have to do it again we'll we'll do it again see you notice how he said we mm -hmm. did you prior to jury deliberations ever think a mistrial was even possible i kept all everything was on the table i guess but um obviously hoping and confident that we were going to get the conviction that we were looking for um so as far as a mistrial yes it's something we didn't want obviously but you know it's just a bump on the road and like i said we'll do it again we'll do it as many times as we have to you'll be back in court every day for another long trial absolutely uh how are your parents <laughs> they're doing all right um <clears throat> i said don't pay That's, attention to them I more know. of my concern is that they have to go through this again i mean I, i'll do it 10 more times if i have to but mm. i i hate the fact that they have to go through this all again Mm -hmm. We don't know where it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. But uh, I mean, overall, they're 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 doing OK. I, oh, doing I don't think that his parents. Sorry. I don't think that his parents should sit through a second trial. 
I think it would just be too much emotionally. I think they should just probably focus on the kids, stay home, and let him do it, you know? Well, they're but, staying at John O'Keefe's house, but did the parents sell their house? so they can I don't know. I don't John? know. Let's just I, I, okay. We'll do, it. we'll do it as many times as we have to. You'll be back in court every day for another long trial. Absolutely. Uh, how are your parents? Oh, sorry. Just they're doing all right. Um, <clears throat> that's more of my concern is that they have to go through this again. I mean, I'll, I'll do it 10 more times if I have to, but I I hate the fact that they have to go through this all again. We don't know where it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. But uh, I mean, overall, they're 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 doing okay. Mm-hmm. And they have John's kids now too. Your <clears throat> yeah. sister's kids. Yeah. So yeah, they're living in my brother's house in Canton. Um, you know, raising my niece and nephew who are sixteen and thirteen. Um, you know, I wanted them to come down here and live with us, but you know, my niece didn't want to leave Canton, didn't want to leave her friends, didn't want to leave her house. And kind of hard to force a kid who's been through as much of, as they've been through to kind of shake up their world, you know, for, I guess, a third time. Yeah. I mean, can you just talk about Kaylee and Patrick? I mean, they, you know, because we didn't put them on camera or anything, of course, during the trial, I had a lot of people ask me, like, what were they like? And they seemed like for a reason, very, very strong kids. Duh. They're great kids. They're strong kids. They're resilient kids. Um, they have every excuse in the world not to be good kids. Um, you know, my niece, Kaylee, <clears throat> super strong. Uh, when asked if she wanted to testify, we told them they didn't have to. And she said, absolutely. She wants to you know she wanted her voice heard her story, story heard, uh, wanted people to listen to her. She felt like because she was, you know, 14 at the time that no one wanted to listen to her. So, uh, she was strong and insisted on doing it. And my nephew was, you know, he wanted to support her. So he said, if she does it, I'll do it. So I'm proud of them both for doing what they did. Yeah. 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 yeah they're really strong when they got on the stand. It yeah. is amazing. Um, do you feel comfortable telling me just from all that you've learned over the last two and a half years, like what you think happened that night? Oh, we, we know what happened. Um, we know mm. that. Johnny and Karen were arguing. It was kind of towards the end of their relationship. Things weren't well. Um, You know, they were drinking and arguing and fighting. And there's no proof of that, though. You know, in an intoxicated state of rage and jealousy, she just decided that she was going to do something about it. And there's no evidence. I mean, even at the bar, they were all over each other. Ran down and left them there to die. Mm -hmm. And there's no evidence out. of that. As soon as she left the house that day when she came over, we didn't talk to any investigators, state police, nobody. Oh. You know, my mother had said, do you think she has something to do with this? And I said, we're not going to think like that. Went outside to the driveway to look at her car, and her car was gone. It was a blizzard. <clears throat> I knew what the driving conditions were like coming from the hospital in Canton. And I knew that they were going to back to Dighton, which was a much further drive. Mm-hmm. So I... We put it together pretty quickly. I was going to ask you that next. So you took the words out of my mouth. It was like, when did you realize? It was literally that morning. <clears throat> yeah. So I would say early afternoon when they came back to the house, you know, she wanted to come over and see the kids. Didn't really interact with them at all. Was there for probably a total of 30 minutes. Didn't say much or anything. And half of her time was upstairs gathering her things. Um, then my wife spoke to her on the phone on their way back to Dighton. And... <clears throat> She hey, pause it real quick. Just have her. So when she was cited, she was told to have no contact with the O'Keefe's. And I, I know, know this. That. How do you know that? Because I researched it. She was told not to have any contact with the McKay's, the Alberts, the O'Keefe's, that she was under investigation. And that's why she went over to the house, saw the kids, said what she had to, collected her stuff, and left. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, she was ordered not to have contact with them. Hmm. The thing that strikes me with this, well, actually, there's two, and I want I want people to think about this. Number one, 
Karen Reeve is also grieving. We heard in the trial, Karen Reed was the only one trying to save his life. She was the only one doing CPR. She was the only one screaming hysterical and upset. The other two were fine. It's in that micro dot like, video yeah, too. It's only as if they, you know, like they're just learning the weather. Um, whereas Karen Reed is distraught. She's hysterical, which is a normal response when you find your significant other dead. Yeah. Bloodied, swollen, bruised, laying on the in the snow. So for them, you know, I think it's quite judgmental of Paul. One day after, without any facts, without any clue, without any evidence whatsoever, he knew in his mind that she did it. He pieced it all together. And because of that, he's not hearing anything else. That's the way it's coming across to me. Because the evidence was overwhelming that she, it is, defies the laws of of physics that it could have occurred the way that the Canton PD have said that it did. And you also mentioned um, in the bar, they appeared very lovey dovey. And that's yeah, they were all over each other. Mm -hmm. but... I don't know. Here we go. Remember the bad times. And I don't think I'm ever going to talk to you guys again. Was that phone call? What made you sure of what had happened? Absolutely. Yeah. They, we already, like I said, we, we put the pieces together on our own and that just really solidified it. See you right know, there. Why would somebody say that? Why would someone say, you know, if you didn't do anything, why would you say you're never going to talk to us again? Or why do you have to remember yeah. the bad times? Almost like justifying what she did. Right. How would you have expected her to act in that situation if she hadn't done something? Um, why is the interviewer egging sad. him on? Empathetic in terms of um, sympathetic, but like I said, when she was at the house, she barely said a word. Mm. You know, maybe uh, she was she still wanted in to shock. be there for the kids. <clears throat> my nephew came home. My niece was already home by the time she got there, and her her family arrived. And I sat down. My nephew in the other room. She sat right next to him. I explained to him that JJ's, you know something happened and he's no longer with us. Um, she didn't say a word. And right after that, she went upstairs and started gathering her belongings. And the next thing you know, they were gone. Oh my God. But yeah. It's hard. It's a strange behavior. Very Is strange. it though? She really reporter when, lady. When did the whole narrative of her version of events become known to you? <clears throat> well, if you remember her first uh, arraignment in Stoughton district court, yeah. Her attorney, David Unetti, had said this is a tragic accident. Uh, his client had no criminal intent. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, fast forward to, I guess, when Alan Jackson came Eight on. months later. And, you it know, was they teamed only, up with yeah. a blogger to get. It wasn't story. a blogger. It wasn't a blogger. He's talking about Turtle Boy, who had nothing to do with it. And maybe the story changed. Because the evidence, evidence started started showing. Yeah, they and started gathering is, evidence. You know, at the end of the day, the evidence piled up where it was like, yeah. hey, wait a second here. Who this cares who happened. came on board? That has nothing to do with anything. And people are only hearing one side of the story and coming to conclusions before actual evidence in the trial had actually begun. Like you did? Um, so wait a minute. He just literally did. Yeah. What he accused other people of doing. All because the way she said, well, I guess I'm not going to be able to talk to you guys again. A lot of the public was misinformed, you know, because they were only getting one side of the story. And, you know, we didn't come out and tell our no, side of the positive. story. Or, you know, the what public was happened. misinformed because they only get one side of the story. We only heard one side of the story, and that was that she hit her boyfriend. And killed going, him. Going 24 miles an hour backwards and killing him. That's the story we heard. I mean, the way that it was reported in the news, it was um, the girlfriend kills cop boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Everything was accused of killing cop boyfriend. So, it no, that's the version we heard. And the majority of the people have heard 
what we've seen on the internet in terms of we watched the trial, Paul. We watched the trial. I didn't watch all this other extra bullshit. I didn't. I watched what was on the stand. Um, we've kept a low profile and have been silent through this this whole ordeal. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, now it's now it's time. You know, now it's time for people to understand the truth. Um, and you know, the jurors. Um, we thank them. They did a great job. Um, they put in a lot of hours, um, paid a lot of attention, worked hard. Unfortunately, they weren't able to come to, you know, a consensus um, as far as a verdict goes. But, you know, we have another chance at it. And, you know, hopefully the jury that we get for the second time around will, you know, we'll see things more clearly. So just so I'm clear. You think this all started when Alan Jackson showed up and Karen throughout the course of this trial, you think she knows what she did. She knows exactly what she did. And she's trying to buy and lie her way out of this, you know, refusing to take accountability for her actions. Not only that, but pointing the finger and blaming innocent people. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Wow. I mean, because the thing is it, it, the story on the defensive side is not just, oh, she didn't do it. It's she didn't do it. And all these other people did. Yeah, I mean, she's pointing the finger at everybody. Everyone's, everyone's lying except for her. According to her, no. Um, I think we had sixty-seven witnesses um, testify. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. I'm sorry. I'm testify. Sorry. Um, I thought it was sixty-seven. And according to them, they're all lying and they're not credible. And they're know, not. They were proven. Um, they were shown. It was shown in court where and how they lied. Okay. I mean, there's first responders. Um, that were just doing their job that day. That can't remember and anything when the defense rocking. started asking questions. All I did was pick up the phone and help because she was asking for help. And according to them, the only one telling the truth is her. Right. So the, I don't even know what to call them. Hold on, pause it. The pause people. it real quick. But did she though? Because I don't remember Karen Reed ever getting up on the stand and telling her side she of the story. It. Karen I don't Reed remember had, her jumping in front of the news yeah. telling her fucking story. I don't the, remember any of this. So at what point is she trying to spin the truth herself? She didn't. She, well, she had, did. Karen Reed has, and Alan Jackson and David Yannetti have had public, they have spoken about this yes. over the last two and a half years. So they have said that she's innocent. She didn't do it. There's a collusion. There is corruption. So they have. They have put out their side, but so did the prosecution. You know, just because the O'Keefe's didn't directly say it, everybody else did. And for all this time, all we've heard is how people didn't like Karen. Yeah. <laughs> 67 witnesses or 68 witnesses, I'm sorry for the for a prosecution, didn't show me anything. There was so much questionable things in terms of text, the way the investigation was handled. So my question would be to Paul, if I was this lady, instead of being on his jock, which she is, in my opinion, I would be asking him, after, don't you have any concerns about the way the investigation was handled? Do you think they should have, you know, investigated other routes, blah, blah, blah? She doesn't. It's... You know, she just wants to appease him so that he'll continue the interview, it seems like. Um, they turned on all those people first, Jen McCabe, Matt McCabe. But then how have they treated you guys over the course of the last year, year and a half? Well, if you just uh, go back to any video of us uh, walking into court during pretrial hearings, yelling, screaming, calling us names. They didn't call you any names. Um, Nobody called you a name. I, I, that never day, happened. I don't know what I did wrong. You, um, I get messages all the time, um, whether through Facebook or other ways of communication, you know, telling me that I'm a moron, I'm stupid, and he dope my eyes and all this stuff. Yeah, um, you do. Mm -hmm. But I just, I ignore those. Um, 
because you're dumb. I don't care what people say Colin's to me because this isn't about me. This mm -hmm. is about my brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I like to think I'm. I know a little bit more of what's going on in the case than you know people that are just reading stuff on on the internet. Mm -hmm. And there's been things said about me, accusations about me, all types of things that just aren't true. Um, but again, I just brush it off because people buy into this big conspiracy, right? That Brian Albert's a murderer or whoever. Okay. If they buy into that, why are they turning on you guys? Have that ever made sense to you? Because we don't believe in a crazy conspiracy theory that holds no merit, no evidence. I mean, we, we know these people. I mean, Jen McCabe has been a family friend of ours. She was friends with my sister. Um, we've known her for over 10 years. She was very helpful with, um, you know, picking Kaylee up to and fro mm -hmm. um, when he took over uh, raising the kids. Um, Carrie Roberts, we've known for a very, very long time, right? And at the time, she didn't really know Jen McCabe or any of the McCabes or Alberts. And her testimony corroborated everything that Jen said and the defense, they just wanted her off the stand. Um, and... <laughs> yes, the because she said the negative or hate that's directed towards me, mostly me and my mother, is because we support these people who are being falsely accused of something they didn't do, right? And their lives have been turned upside down and partially ruined. You know, Colin Albert, who was a 17 year old kid at the time, his life has been turned upside down and ruined. Stop, stop right there, stop, Colin Albert is not this innocent glee club, you know, 17 year old student. Colin Albert was making videos threatening people. Remember? Bang, bang. That kind of thing. <clears throat> he, Colin Albert, bragged about being in fights and for some reason had scrapes across. The next following day that he supposedly Superman punched the, the, uh, the, the <clears throat> gravel to stop. <clears throat> Come on, man. We all watch Black I don't even Widow. Know. <coughs> Sorry. I was eating a jalapeno and I ended up putting it down my windpipe and not. <coughs> <laughs> and I tried to drink. And the bad thing is, is like it got hung. <coughs> I felt like it was teeter tottering, like, nah, bitch, you pick it. So every time I breathed in, it was like. <coughs> <coughs> so I apologize, people. That's all right. Stop. Colin Albert ruined his own life by being a punk. Um, I've gotten to know um, the Alberts through all this, and they're all good people. <laughs> Are they, though? Um, Are so they? Just, the, just because we don't believe in a crazy conspiracy theory, and we believe that Karen Reed is guilty of killing my brother, you know, they take it on us. Doesn't it feel um, sometimes like your brother's forgotten in all of this? Absolutely. All the time. Um, it's it's turned into the Karen Reed show. Well, it's her you trial. Know, she walks <laughs> through a crowd that cheers her on. She goes out in public, takes pictures. Because um, they think she's, they know. She's just, she's just living her life like nothing's ever happened. And meanwhile, That's my brother. because it was Mass versus Karen. Yeah. You it, it's not it's... Mass versus O'Keefe. It's Mass versus Karen or Reed. And. She's not just going on and living her life. She's not teaching. She's her life has been ruined, Flipped upside down, destroyed mm -hmm. financially, emotionally. I mean, come on. It's been gone for almost two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And I just want people to go back to who the victim is in this. It's not her. It's my brother. What do you want people to know about John? You call him Johnny. Kids call him JJ. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> my older brother. So, I mean, uh, generous, loyal. Um, he seemed like a pain great in the ass guy. To me. I'm sorry, pain in the butt to me. You say pain in the ass. <laughs> um, you know, just because he was older, my older brother. But he just, he just was there if you needed him. Took care of the people that he loved. Yeah, he's looking up in a way. He's really thinking hard. hard. Guy he's fighting tears, though. Who didn't deserve any of this? No, I don't believe it. You know, he, I don't believe he, he's fighting any tears. He and do. uprooted his life. Went from a you know a single single, the bachelor lifestyle living in Boston to moving into instant 
dad role. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's something that obviously everyone <clears throat> admires him the most for, and I do too. Um, you know, it wasn't easy for him at the beginning, but, you know, he learned to figure it out and, you know, we all helped as much as we could without, right. without getting in the way. Just an overall good guy. And I assume he chose like to it. do that, right? I mean, your, your sister's situation is <clears throat> unimaginable. Yeah. So then, well, after my brother-in-law passed away, we had to figure out, all right, what do we do? And at the time, my wife and I were like, all right, we'll take them in. Um, at the time, we had a three-year-old and an eight-month-old. So we were trying to figure out the, how are we going to do this. Our house was small. Uh, we didn't really want to live in the house that they both passed away in, but we were trying to figure it out um, the best way possible. And then Johnny just stepped up one day and just said, I got it. Wow. And then pretty much moved in the next day and took it from there for eight years. So there's a reason that's why so many people described that that's what they admired about him. Yeah. I he mean, a selfless act, changing your life, you know, to take care of his family and people he loves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and mean, that's, that's him in a nutshell. I know I asked you how your mom's doing already or how your parents are doing, but, um, I just can't imagine for her losing two kids. No. Is she like a, a different person now? Uh, she's a strong woman. I'll give her that. Um, yeah, it's unimaginable, you know, just to lose them in the ways that she did. You know, my sister suffering for five and a half months with brain cancer. Yeah. Um, oh. But at least have had the opportunity to say goodbye. And then, you know, with my brother just being taken from us so quickly and senselessly. Um, I don't know, somehow she, she keeps it all together. Um, my father, quiet, kind of keeps to himself. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, overall, what they've gone through is, it's unfair, yeah. it's unimaginable, but they're strong and they keep moving forward and just same thing. They do what they have to do to take care of their family. I have to ask you, uh, we got ushered out of the courtroom pretty quickly on Monday. You had a little exchange with Karen. Do you mind what happened oh, there? Didn't know that. Oh yeah. So throughout the trial, she likes to turn, look at me and smirk. Um, she's never once made eye contact with my wife, Erin. Um, so when the mistrial was announced, she turned and looked right at Erin and gave her a smirk hmm. and then went over and hugging and celebrating. None of that's true. And I just said it's been debunked. Yeah, that was debunked. They showed the courtroom and everything afterwards. That never happened. You're not done yet. And they did show him that's where exactly. he's saying something as no, he's walking yeah, past him, but day, she's in the month middle of hugging her dad uh, when he says something to her. Sitting so closely. Um, and that's something that she wanted. Yeah, can you talk about that? I mean, the courtroom switch, we know all the legal reasons why it happened, but you guys were like arm's length from her mm -hmm. for the entire trial. Um, yep. Um, I guess after a while, you just got used to it, but yeah, showing up every day, sitting that close to the person that took my brother away from us. You think? It was not easy. It was, I mean, they were right behind you. It took a lot. <laughs> you invited um, them. To not say anything, but again... It wasn't about me. We were there for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to get justice, justice for Johnny. Hmm. What did um, Adam and Laura say to you guys afterwards? Like what, looking ahead? Yeah, I mean, they were they were disappointed in the, the outcome. But Adam said, he goes, we're just going to do it again. He goes, I'll start tomorrow. You know, so they're confident. Um, they have the truth on their side, you know, Unfortunately, if you have yeah, the defense, they high powered attorneys enough and <laughs> put your enough lies out there. That's not how courts work. Influencing people. Um, Who'd they influence? Or they're just no turning back. Mm -hmm. I think people just don't want to admit that they were wrong or duped. Like you? <laughs> um, but, you know, they're. They're confident, and we're going to go at it again. If I were her, I would he, ask him, he being do you Adam, think has it's... been 
possible. Like he's you kept were to himself a lot, wronger, similar to you guys over yep. the course of this. Yep. Um, do you think that's been hard? I'm sure it's been extremely hard on him. Um, you know, he's not the type that looks at social media or pays attention to any of that stuff. He just keeps his head down and does his job. Good for him. You know, he's not the flashy attorney that wants to be on camera all the time and have press conferences on the stairs mm -hmm. like some people. Um, Dig. He's just a hard working, you know, I guess nose to the grindstone kind of guy and just does his job. Um, Poorly. You know, the, he did a real very difficult job. job. But he's never once really complained about it, but, you know, to us anyway. Yeah. And I know it's hard on him. I know it's hard on Laura. I know it's been hard on everyone who's been involved in this. Um, but everyone's determined that we're just going to do it again. Has your circle. He's going to have a rude have awakening if this guys? gets a dismissal. Has it grown? Has it gotten smaller over the course of all the noise outside of this? Um, so for me personally, I've kept my circle, um, smaller, mm -hmm. um, people that we were friends with or haven't seen in a while. You just don't know where their, where their mind's at, yeah. um, what they believe. So we've been forced to become very kind of like defensive, uh, not as outgoing as we normally would be. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think recently we've, I think we're gaining some more support. Um, I think people have been afraid, you know, to show up to court and I guess counter protest to the people that are outside. Um, I think people have been in fear. Um, but I think that's starting to turn. I think people want justice. Um, they don't want this influence of, you know, social media and public perception based off of lies to you know, to win or to take control of this. Do you want people to show up with? We'll take support? all the support we can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we're not going to turn anybody away. I mean, what is this? Every time we go to is court, this a ball game. You know, we're kind of portrayed as the bad guys. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, it's you know we lost a loved one. Mm -hmm. You know, but somehow we're still, I guess, vilified for. Okay. Tommy. Here we go. Talk to me. Okay. I can empathize with him. I, I really don't. He's just repeating himself at this point. I can empathize with him and his anger and his resentment. However, everything he's accusing everybody else of doing, he and he's doing. He Lip initially blinders. did. Yeah. And that's where his and now he's saying he won't that hear anything they're else. usually outspoken. He's not hearing anybody who has a different opinion, so he's keeping them away. Like, okay, keep that opinion. Just not believing in a crazy conspiracy. Yeah. On that note, was it hard for you at all? I mean, there were certainly some moments in the case where there were weak spots exposed, right? Like, I think about the solo cups and Trooper Proctor, who now is facing job consequences as a result of this. What was it like for you to listen to those moments that weren't necessarily benefiting the state's case? Well, as far as at the very early stages, I mean, a crime scene during a blizzard yeah. is can't be an easy thing to navigate. And yet, you know, they found evidence, they found a sneaker, they found pieces of taillight, you know, um, obviously you're not going to see everything under a couple feet of snow. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think they improvised the best they could. Um, you know, every investigation is going <laughs> to be, he's referring to the snowblower scrutinized to some cup. degree. Um, but you know, for, they did what they had to do with what they had. And Bullshit. They though? Bullshit. Bullshit. And I know I said that three times. I'm so sorry. They However, did a sloppy job. It was sloppy. Negligent. Had, it was proven they had resources way closer. I mean, come, stop it. Um, he clearly only heard what he wanted to hear because he did go into that trial with already with the mindset. Mind, he said it didn't matter what anybody said. He yep. knew the minute she left the house, she did it. He wants that's it. So. 
unfortunately, Paul, my empathy for you can only go so far because I, you know, you don't want the truth. You just want to blame Karen because you think she did it because you didn't agree with the way either she grieves or her not talking to you guys because unbeknownst to you, maybe she was ordered. She was in told not to have contact with you guys outside of that getting her stuff. They just, like I said, had to improvise and do the best they could. Um, as far as, you know, Michael Proctor's comments, I mean, he even said, too, they were unprofessional, um, which we agree with. Unprofessional, but, that's um, it? Not horrible? You know, this... And demeaning? This and guy, disgusting? his life's been ruined. He did know? it to himself. Um, getting, pers getting his personal cell phone, which was something that should never have happened... Except he used his personal cell phone to discuss witnesses, the defendant, the case, and everything. And so he tried it to is... search up nudes on John's phone. No, on Karen's. Was it Karen's or John's? Yeah, he had no. He had Karen's okay, phone. Okay, okay. Um, but so in that respect, I have to say Paul is absolutely wrong. Michael Proctor ruined his his own life. Um, Josh Levy should never have been intervened in this. Uh, an FBI investigation was launched due to cherry picked evidence that was, or pieces of discovery that was only provided by the defense. Like this is on, this it's is pretty unprecedented to not even speak to the North. I hate this fucking interviewer. Not, not speak I don't, to the mass police. Yeah. She is horrible. Yeah. She needs to be fired. I'm not going to say um, that far, but just to intervene himself in that way. And, which casted, you know, a shadow of doubt on the investigation. But it is, it does come across as if the uh, journalist party. is very, you know, Karen Reed is, is, is guilty or she's at least. Or is she part. playing it that way so that she gets so that, to continue the interview without it yeah. stopping? Right. Because either way you shouldn't be that way. Because he specifically said he was going to keep his circle uh, very tight very small he doesn't want the outside opinions do you get updates on that i do not uh i do plan on trying to sit down with him at some point yeah whether i got a knock on the door i sent him an email but i'm sure i won't get a response but if i have to go knock on the door and ask for a sit down that's what i'll do is there anything i haven't asked you about that you want to make sure people know i just in all this i just want people to remember the actual victim I think I mentioned it before that it's not the Karen Reed show. Yeah. This is about a good man whose life was taken way too soon and for selfish reasons and has created a, a void in our life that was already an enormous void but just made it even that much bigger. And now he's fighting back. I just want people sure, I to think. remember him and want him to get the justice he deserves and that we deserve. Mm -hmm. Why do you deserve it? He's his brother. And I don't, I don't think so. I mean, if you're looking for justice for your brother, then that's it. But why do you deserve it? I just, just, I hate, well, because and I get how people use family. words, and that yeah. might not, I like, but for me, it's not about you. No. And this trial wasn't about John. It, I mean, it had something to do with John, but it was no. Karen on trial. Yes. So I see it two ways. It's, it's twofold. Yes, it is about John O'Keefe. Yes. But it is Karen Reed's trial. So in that respect, it was the Karen Reed show because 68 witnesses really weren't talking so much about John as they were Karen and what she did. So it was as far as his comment about justice that we deserve when you suffer a grievance like that. It's not just one person. It's it does affect the whole family and the whole family wants justice. Um. But he already had his mind set. He, and he, it's still set. He doesn't want to hear any other opinion. And he even said that.
So it's kind of, I mean, I feel bad for him, Tommy. I really do. I feel bad for their family. I feel bad for them because they were already estranged to begin with and they didn't, it wasn't fully, it sounds like from this, it wasn't fully healed. And then they lost him before it was, and it was too late. Yeah. And that, no, I, I totally think, is agree absolutely, with you. that's awful. That's absolutely I just don't right. like, I don't like the words saying we deserve. It just, it bothers me. I don't know. I understand, you know, you're out there for justice for your brother. Brother. He deserves justice. Yes. But I don't but agree with the word saying we deserve justice. Because they're fighting on behalf of the, it, that's why. When I, families, it's just how the words sounded. You know what I'm saying? You've said yeah. it before to me. It's Words have actions. Yeah. And, and to me, it just, it's standoffish. It's like. Well, that is something that is very typical. And is a very common feeling in murder cases or or any other kind of criminal case, the victim and the family suffers. The whole family suffers. And so they want justice because what he said is they feel like they deserve justice because somebody stole their family member, killed their family member. And that I mean, I, I see where you come from. I just yeah. don't like how the verbiage was like to me. I don't know, but you know how I don't think. Yeah, uh, maybe somebody else thinks the same way I do. Or comment I just, below if you. That's 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 something I have questions about because I don't think like that. Like, right, I'm right. out for justice for you know Mel. If, if something was to happen to you, don't think I wouldn't fight justice for oh, Mel. I know, but I oh, wouldn't I say we deserve. You don't deserve anything. Like you want, you want justice for him. You want. You know what I'm think, saying? It's not about, and again, it wouldn't be about us. Right. It'd be about you and your family. Right. From my yeah. perspective. And I, I get where you're getting at. Like, that's his family. You're right. my family. Right. I would, but that's how I'd look at it is like, you know, I'd want everything for your family. But yeah. I don't, at no point do I deserve it. And that's the problem I have. Like I said, you, it's you just, just don't like that word. Does the yeah, vernacular Yeah, I does don't like deserve. it. And that's exactly what I'm saying. It's okay. the... the Anyways, well, I, I mean, you got that, to see his side of the story, and this was this was about a week later. That was very revealing, and uh, I didn't think that any point in the in the trial he was thinking that way. I did not. And I we thought, talked about we were like, look at his face, because I, there were a couple times on his face he was just like, but he was puzzled. Mm -hmm. But. You know, now hearing this interview, I'm kind of like, went in with a closed mind. I don't think you know, our you know, we were we were just what is the word I'm looking for? Speculating, yeah, we definitely speculated. I would think that if it were me, I would go into a trial believing one thing, but when bomb after bomb after bomb is getting dropped, I would then be like. Pump the and your key witnesses are now in trouble. Like, yeah. And if the FBI investigation and he started, thinks he's only in trouble for the the sending out information and yeah. the text messages. He's not just in trouble for that. There was more. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. I don't know. I uh, hope everybody stays safe. Take care of each other. Keep your dogs off the hot pavement. And being the former combat medic that I was, we have ex we Make have sure they have lots of water outside. Lots of water, you guys. We it. are on a lot. Uh, we are on extreme heat warnings across the United States. So mm -hmm. you guys drink water and take care of your animals. Until then, we will spoke at you later. Peace. Mm -hmm.